Hi everyone! Imagine you have a net agency and you receive an order to create a jingle advertising statistics. How about unraveling deep secrets of nature? Everything that nature tells us about itself is data that we acquire. Unfortunately, there seems to be no direct contact with the hidden laws of nature. We are left to just guessing the laws on the basis of the data. Sometimes this task can be easy, but more often you have to work hard to get your desired answer from the available data. In the chapter on the maximum likelihood method, we presented a way how to estimate unknown parameters. For instance, you can use the maximum likelihood method if you know the shape of the PDF from which the data was sampled and you just want to check values of its parameters. Of course, it can take you years to get the right shape of the PDF, but once you have it, the statistical procedure is more or less clear and defined. When building the PDF, the most time-consuming and tricky thing is to realize how your detector distorts the underlying pure PDF that's there in nature. Still, you often have the form of the pure PDF and you will be able to use the maximum likelihood method or something similar to estimate its parameters in the end. However, you might also be in a situation when you have no pre-understanding of the pure PDF, the nature laws to say, and you want to measure its shape. Even though it is possible to formulate this task as a question that the maximum likelihood method can address, it turns out it is not the optimal method to use. Let's summarize that there are two levels with which the nature is protecting its secrets. The first level is that we have to use some measuring device when we want to measure something. And the measuring device distorts the shape of the pure natural PDF. The second level is that the result of a measurement is just data sampled from the distorted PDF. Unfolding is a process of determination of the shape of the pure PDF in exactly this situation and without any prior knowledge of the shape. The content of this chapter is heavily based on Glenn Coven's book Statistical Data Analysis and on a lecture by Glenn Coven given within the CERN Academic Training Lecture regular program. The lecture is recorded on CDS and you will find a link to it at the end of this video. All useful links are also provided as comments to this video. Implementation of most methods mentioned in this chapter is in the Rue Unfold package. After the introductory words, let's move to formulating the unfolding problem in a mathematical language. For this, we will use an example of an electron energy measurement in an experiment studying a beta decay. So, let's assume we want to measure a distribution of Y, which is, in our example, the electron energy from a beta decay. Let's denote its PDF as F true of Y to emphasize that it is the pure true natural PDF. Simply, it is not the one distorted by our detector effects. We will further assume that our detector distorts this true distribution in two ways. First of all, the detector has a finite resolution and therefore the observed energy value in an event, given the true value, is a random variable. In the simplest case, its distribution might be a Gaussian PDF with mean equal to the true value y and with some non-zero variance. The observed value x is distributed according to a Gaussian distribution of x with mu equal to y and with some variance sigma. Unfortunately, much more complicated PDFs might be needed to describe the resolution. Anyway, the particle physics jargon is that the true energy is smeared. Smeared with some resolution function. Second, the detector has a finite acceptance. For example, the electron can fly to a region that is not covered by the detector. Or it can have energy below some minimal threshold. 
we say that the detector has an electron reconstruction efficiency lower than 1. As a consequence of these two effects, finite resolution and finite acceptance, the true distribution of y gets distorted into the following form. f of x is equal to 1 over n times integral over i s of x given y epsilon of y f sub true of y. This is a key formula to keep in mind throughout the whole chapter. Its individual components are s of x given y is the resolution function. Epsilon of y is the reconstruction efficiency of an electron with the true energy y. 1 over n is just a normalization factor. It is beneficial to define a so-called response function r. r of x given y is equal to s of x given y times epsilon y. A common jargon is that the true pdf f sub true of y is folded with the response function r of x given y. Voila! The function we are after is folded. Naturally, the inverse operation that we need to perform is called unfolding. There are other names describing the same problem, such as deconvolution or unsmearing. They are used as synonyms to unfolding, but in fact, these names don't reflect the need to correct for the finite efficiency as well. Therefore, let's stick to the name unfolding. It is the most common one anyway. Of course, unfolding is not a matter of just particle physics. There are many disciplines that face the same problem. For example, the problem of correcting blurred photos is exactly unfolding. As you will see later, unfolding is a complicated and tricky procedure. People usually tend to avoid it, if possible, and indeed there are many situations in which it is legitimate not to unfold. As we've said already, if you know the parametrization of the true PDF and you manage to fold it, then you can estimate the parameters with the maximum likelihood method and you don't need to unfold. Note that folding is a process you need to do anyway. In searches for new physics, you typically compare the folded spectra, the folded true PDF, with data that you read out of your detector. A common particle physics jargon is that you are comparing detector level, or reconstructed, or just RICO spectra. In contrast to that, the true PDF of the unfolded data are often called truth or particle level spectra. Well, the level of stable particles is the most common one to which you unfold. Rarely, you might also want to unfold to the parton level. However, be careful about that, because you aren't unfolding just detector effects, but also a tricky physics process. To close this introductory video, let's discuss why can unfolding be useful in particle physics. In short, unfolding preserves usefulness of the experimental results. Imagine you are testing a model and you just compare its folded prediction with data, so at the detector level. Such a comparison is relatively fast and you publish your paper in a reasonable time, but then in a couple of years a similar new model pops up. You would like to test it, but unfortunately you cannot do it with the published data. You have to fold the new model prediction first. It's very likely you will not be able to do it, because the software of experimental collaborations evolves very fast. Even as a member of the collaboration, you will have a very low chance to run exactly the version of the software that was used for the published result. And if you are not the collaboration member, then there's no chance for you. With unfolding, you don't have this problem, because you can compare unfolded spectra directly to your model predictions. Also, unfolding makes it possible to compare results of different experiments. Obviously, different detectors distort the true PDF in different ways 
and therefore it is absolutely impossible to compare detector level spectra of different experiments. I hope I advertised the unfolding enough to persuade you that it might be a desirable thing to do. In the next videos you will learn how to do it with the maximum likelihood method, what the drawback of this method is, and what are the actual unfolding methods used in particle physics. So stay tuned!